All right. So what you should have done for y equals sine x, which, by the way, according to how they've graphed it here, y equals sine theta is really what you're doing here. Or if you prefer, you can interchange this and make this x and make that x, and then I think it'll make more sense. But the idea is this. Your input is 0, pi over 6, pi over 4. All the angles is what you're plugging in to this new function. The output is the definition on the unit circle. So the output is simply going to be the y-coordinate, because that's what sine means, on the unit circle. So the output will be 0, a half, root 3 over 2. You guys got all these, right? Okay. The decimals for these values look like this. Hopefully you found that, okay, if we graph 0, 0, that this graph starts at 0, starts to go up to 0 0.5, up to 0 0.71, up to 0 0.87, it reaches a 1 value, and then what? It goes back down, hits 0 again, and then after that, it actually dips below the x-axis, goes all the way down to negative 1, and then comes back up and hits 0. Everybody sees that pattern, right? Here's what you need to focus on. All these bigger values is what we're going to use to get a really nice graph. Okay? Because these are easy points to graph. The rest of the stuff that's in between paints a picture and tells you that's increasing, then it decreases, and all that stuff. Okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to label 1, or I'm sorry, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi on the x-axis. Okay? And now what I'm going to do is graph, uh, graph the points. At 0, we're at 0. At pi over 2, we're at 1. At pi, we're back at 0. At 3 pi over 2, we're at negative 1. And at 2 pi, we're back up to 0. Agreed? So then all you're going to do is Draw your best little curve. I put every single point. That's, that's fine. I was expecting you to do that. And now we're just kind of going through how to quickly graph these. Okay? Does everybody see how I got this? Okay? Now, you guys understand that this keeps going, right? We talked about this yesterday, how you can keep going around and around the unit circle, right? Just like we can keep doing that, this is going to repeat... And it also goes backwards, okay? But the idea is that this is the sine graph, okay? Now, the length of one period, we talked about this going over the homework. It's how long it takes for the whole graph to what? To repeat. So if I'm starting at zero, when does it really start to repeat everything? Yes. So from 0 to 2 pi, do you guys see how there's a copy of that following it? So from here, these are copies of each other, right? So from 0 to 2 pi, the length of that is 2 pi. Okay. The amplitude, how do we find it again? Oh, oh, you take the highest and lowest point and then divide by 2. So what's the length from negative 1 to 1? Two, two. 2 cut in half is 1. one. Just one. Okay. Uh, let's do the easy stuff. <clears throat> the domain is? Very good. The range? Negative 1 to 1. Yes. <clears throat> the highest point and lowest point, there are several of them. Okay? I know a lot of you aren't really listening right now because you have this. This is very important, this notation that we're going to talk about. Okay? The x-intercepts. How many are there? An infinite amount. One, two, three, four, five. It just keeps going, right? Here is the easiest way 
to write all the x-intercepts without having to actually list them all out. Okay? Pick one to start with. It doesn't matter which one. So let's start with 0. So we're going to say that x equals 0. And now, where's the next one? Pi. Where's the next one after that? How far apart are all the x-intercepts? They're just going up by pi's, right? So we're going up by pi. Then we're going to add pi. But we're going to attach a k to this, where k, here's the notation, is any integer. Whoops. Do you write all of that? You do. Okay. This means k can be any integer. Can you like write that bigger? Sure. This, let me write it again. Okay. K is K. This is a little epsilon. Here's the how I do it. You draw, you draw a little C, and then just put a little line in the middle. That's the easiest way to draw it. And then you draw a Z with a little double stem here. Okay. I'm trying to do this quickly. Okay, so just let me get through this. This symbol, epsilon stands for or means belongs to the set or is a member of. You don't need to know that. Okay? This represents the entire set of integers. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then all the negatives. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay? So that's what this means. If you don't want to write it with symbols, then you can just write out x can be 0 plus pi k and then write out the words k is any, where k is any integer. Okay? Do you guys understand why we have to write k as any integer? Okay. Yes. Yes. Now, y intercept. There's only one. What is it? Zero. Zero. Okay. Everybody with me here so far? Yes. Okay. Highest point. Well, there's not just one highest point. There's this one. That one, right? They're all at one. So we're going to have to list where those values are. So the highest point, we're going to do the same exact thing. What x value can we start with here? <coughs> Pi over 2. And then we're going to do the same kind of fancy notation so that we don't have to list an infinite amount of points. Where is the next highest point? Well, let's see. What are these going up by, by the way? Pi over 2, pi over 2, pi over 2. So this should be 5 pi over 2 if I'm counting by pi over 2, right? So what's the difference from here to here? What's it going up by? Very good. So we're going to add 2 pi k. And what is the y coordinate at all these x values? 1. And again here, k is any integer. Because from this point to this point is 2 pi units away. They're all 2 pi units apart. Yeah, essentially, yes. Now, the lowest point will be similar. The y coordinate for the lowest point is always negative 1. And do you guys see that these are also 2 pi units apart? So where can we start? We'll start at x equals 3 pi over 2. And we can also add 2 pi k. Okay. Everybody got all this information down? That's for sine. Okay. Let's do cosine quickly. Okay. For the co... Whoops. That's calc 3. Where's my... There it is. Okay, cosine table should look something like this, all right? And please, I want you to make a differentiation or distinction between, because a couple groups were asking about 
switching x's and y's and cosine is x and all that stuff. Okay. These are still your x values. You're still using the same inputs. Okay. The outputs, which are the y values, represent the x coordinates on the unit circle at these angles. Does that make sense? So I know there's x being thrown around there a bunch of different times, but you need to make that distinction. And again, we're going to focus on the high and low points. So here's one, and also the zeros are good, because those are easy to graph. And we're going to start with those and then label everything just the same. Okay? I'll do this one in purple. So let's compare. Sine started at... Zero, zero. Where's cosine going to start? One. At one on the y-axis. And then what does it do after that? It decreases. Eventually it hits zero. And then it keeps going down. Eventually gets to negative one. Maybe I should not label this zero. I mean, it is zero there, but what's the x-coordinate? The x-coordinate there is zero. pi over 2. The x-coordinate here is pi. The next one is 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. And then we go back up. And it also just another wave, but we start up, go down, come down, come back up. It looks something like this. Okay. And again, this also repeats, but both ways. Okay. Yes. Yes. Based on the table, because we found from zero to pi over two, these values are decreasing. Does that make sense? So that's how we did all this stuff in between so that we can see it goes down, goes down, comes up, comes up. All right. Same question. How long does it take for this graph to repeat itself? So the length of the period is also 2 pi. The amplitude is the same as the sine graph. It's 1 for this, right? I need... A volunteer to help me with the x-intercepts, with using the correct notation. Brenda, you got it? Shh. You're very close. Where is the first x-intercept? It's at pi over 2, so just switch up what you said a little bit. Go back. The the thing in front of the K, that's how far apart all the x intercepts are. So that's still gonna be pi. It's just we're starting at a different place. There you go. There you go. Very good. You guys see how she got that? We start at pi over two. The next intercept is pi units away. So we add pi k, and we can keep adding pi to get to the next x-intercept. Everything is pi units away. Everybody see that? Y-intercept. Here the y-intercept is 1. The domain. Still negative infinity to infinity. Range. Still negative 1 to 1. High points, okay, another volunteer to do the correct notation here. Where's the first high point, Kyle? Uh, 0 plus 2 pi k comma 1 k is equal to all integers. Very good. How about you? Well, why do we start at 0? Because at x equals 0, that's the first high point. Isn't it 1? This is where x equals 0. Right? The y coordinate is 1. And now, where's the next highest point? 
It's all the way here at x equals 2 pi comma 1. In other words, they start repeating every 2 pi units. Does that make sense? The low points. Justin. Yes. Comma. Very good. Okay, do you guys see how Justin got that? Kevin, you see how he got it? Okay. What's that? Yeah, I mean, it's just how far apart the, uh, all those points are. Okay. Now, here are some things I need you to really, really know, because coming in tomorrow, I may just say, hey, graph three periods of y equals sine x, graph three periods of y equals cosine x, and turn it in, and we'll count it as a quiz. Okay? You tell me. What's one period? So if we're doing three periods, you got to go all the way up to 6 pi. That's it. Okay? Not a line. Should we do one here? Okay. Let's do this first one together. For sine x. And I also want you to pay careful attention to how we're spacing everything out. If you go back to the sine graph, from 0 to 2 pi, we said was one period, right? How many sections are there? There's four sections between 0 and 2 pi, right? In other words, if I take 2 pi and I divide that by 4, that tells me how much each section is going up by. Does that make sense? Because I split 2 pi up into four pieces. What's 2 pi divided by 4? Pi over 2, so that's what I'm counting by. So each tick mark increases by pi over 2. Do you guys see that? 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2 is the same as 2 pi, and so on and so forth. Okay? Yes? Always. Always, always, always. Every graph we're going to do this unit will be split up into four sections. So if you, uh, it's, it's not so much because of the quadrants, it's more because... These are, that's just how it turns out that the important points are spaced out. Okay? So when I'm doing, when I'm doing three periods... Does that mean that each length of one period is going to be 2 pi? Yes. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. That should cover one period, right? 5, 6, 7, 8. That should cover two periods. 9, 10, 11, 12. Should cover three periods. And then now we just count. Pi over 2. 2 pi over 2 is pi. 3 pi over 2. 2 pi. What comes next? 5 pi over 2. What's 6 pi over 2? 3 pi. 7 pi over 2. 8 pi over 2 is 4 pi. 9 pi over 2. 10 pi over 2 is just 5 pi. 11 pi over 2. Add another pi over 2. 12 pi over 2 is... 6 pi. They're all just going up by pi over 2. 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2. I'm just simplifying them. Okay? And now here's the easiest way to do sine. If you remember how it starts, where does it start? At 0 or at 1? At 0. And then what does it do after that? Up, and then it comes down, goes down, comes up, just keep repeating, fill in all the points first, and then it's actually kind of fun and an easy graph to draw. I don't know, I see you have some strange fun. comments today. <laughs> Cosine is similar. Make sure you guys come in knowing how to graph these, okay? School tomorrow. School tomorrow.